I believe God through the Holy Spirit is speaking to us about uh, this, this a great sense of 2013. Knowing that God wants to show us his favor. Can you say that word favor? favor. Say it loud, favor. favor. God through the Holy Spirit wants us to know that, uh, you know, this is an, a, year of, uh, a year of favor or breakthrough. And many people... Uh, have been through a tough year last year and every year as we talk about that year being something or other uh, even in a year of favor there may be challenges in year of great blessing there may be problems but generally that's the heart of God that God wants someone called me the other day and said hey John I'm so excited I said well, what happened well I checked up on that great man of God's website and he has written on his website that 2013 is a year of favor so I was very excited but well, I praise God for that I believe God these days wants to show us his favor and uh, in the Bible the Bible talks about people uh, uh, many many times in the Bible the Bible has used this word favor and in the next few days I want to talk about or teach about favor and I want to introduce this entire topic of the principles of favor God wants us to move in favor look at somebody and say I'm blessed and highly favored come on tell somebody Amen. I met a man of God a few months ago who told me that every time somebody asks him, how are you doing? He looks at that person and says, I'm blessed and highly favored. You know, after I heard that, I started doing, you learn some good things from people, you know. Uh, people started asking, how are you doing? I started saying, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. I mean, you'd be, you'd be in, a, in a season of weeping, but somebody asked, how are you doing? I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. You may be going through some difficult times financially, but you ask, somebody asks you, how are you doing? I'm blessed and I'm highly favored of God. What you are doing is not, you are not calling your present situation. You are calling and declaring what God is speaking over you. And God says that we are blessed and highly favored. Look at somebody and say that again. I am blessed and highly favored of God. How many blessed and highly favored of God? You know, when favor, we study this word favor in the Bible, there are some principles in the Bible that explain favor. When you, when you hear the word favor, you almost think about everything going smooth for you. The Bible says in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2 and verse 40, the Bible says, And the child grew and became strong. This is talking about Jesus. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Luke 2.40 the Bible says the child grew, became strong, filled with wisdom and favor. Say favor. Favor was upon him. If you look at the Bible, this word favor is being mentioned with many people. The Bible says favor was upon Jesus. Then the Bible says Joseph grew in the favor of the Lord. The Bible says upon Daniel, Daniel 1.9 it says, and Daniel had favor with God. You look at... Uh, I mean, you look at so many Samuel, for Samuel, it says, and Samuel grew in the favor of the Lord. So many people in the Bible were people that operated in the principle of favor. Say it loud, principle of favor. Say, say it loud, there are some principles of favor. And favor is not something God discovered like on January 1st, 2013. Favor is something which is part and close to God's heart. All the way from the beginning of times. When God put Adam and Eve in the garden, he favored them. And he said, you want you to till the garden. And, and you know, the garden had gold and the rivers were running through the garden. And, and you know, all kinds of fruit bearing plants were there. And animals and, and the tree of life. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and Adam had a companion Eve. And, and he had the presence of God. In the morning he worked uh, by the day. And the evening he walked with God in the cool of the night. If that is not favor, what is favor? <laughs> he was living in amazing favor. So favor isn't something that just, you, you know, God woke up to like, you know, in the beginning of this month. But the Bible says that there are some things about favor. That God has some seasons. The Bible says in Luke's gospel chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says, And the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to what? 
to preach the good news. He has anointed me to proclaim the good news. He has sent me to proclaim liberty, he the recovering sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to what? Proclaim the favorable year of God. So God, even though God wants to pour his favor, there are seasons of favor. And we've got to understand in the spirit, supernatural open windows of favor upon God's generation. Amen. We've got to be people of the spirit that understand in the spirit when God is preparing to do something. And we've got to be ready for that kind of a God time in our life. Hallelujah. We've got to be ready to understand what is the season we are living in. Why are we living in that season? What is God trying to do and say in that season? Why is that window opened for that season? Because Jesus looked at them and said, My kairos has not come. Which means he said, My appointed time has not come. Which means when God's appointed time comes, there is something of favor that happens in God's appointed time. The Bible says in the fullness of time, what happened? God sent his son. That was favor. It was a season of favor. Jesus said, I have come to proclaim the year of God's favor. In fact, favor doesn't just happen just how, you know, uh, I was listening to Pastor Joby was speaking yesterday about this particular scripture. He was saying, God, you know, the, Jesus would have read the scripture as was his usual pattern. As he was used to doing, he came to the synagogue and he what? And he read the scriptures. But that day was a favored day. When Jesus stood up as usual, while he was usually reading the scriptures in, in the synagogue, that day he stood up and he said, you know, today the scriptures are fulfilled in your hearing. That scriptures would have been spoken and read a thousand times before. In the last 800 years or so after, probably Isaiah gave them those scriptures. A thousand times they must have read those scriptures. But Jesus stood up that day and he said, today the scriptures are fulfilled in your hearing. Which means there is an appointed time of God. There is a moment of God's favor. There is a year of God's favor. There are seasons. You know, you got to understand something. Opportunities should not be missed by us. I heard a saying that went like this. He says that the, an opportunity of a lifetime should be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. Amen. I'll say that again. An opportunity of a lifetime should be seized in the lifetime of the opportunity. There are many, many times you see in the Bible, people would sit back and lament that the, that, that the, the, the winter has set in, the summer has passed and we are not saved. And things were not done because we had not seized the favorable moment of God. The time and the season of God. You know, the other day I was talking to one couple. They were saying, brother, we will obey God. We know when we obey God, there is no turning back. But we are waiting for the right time to obey God. I was sharing to them about water baptism. They are waiting for the right time to obey God in water baptism. And sometimes we miss the entire season of God. We miss the entire blessing and the plan of God simply because we don't seize the opportunity in that moment. Say loud after me, favorable time. Jesus said, today the scriptures has been fulfilled in your hearing. But something happened between the usual times of reading and that day. If you read in the scripture, something happened between as was his practice. Where he came and read the scriptures normally, as was his practice. Something happened. What happened? The Bible says that he went down to the river and he looked at John the Baptist and he said that you must baptize me. And John looked at him and said, it is I that need to be baptized by you. I am not worthy to even untie your sandals. Jesus said, far be it that you forbid that this must happen. You must baptize me so that we can fulfill all righteousness. And John baptized him and the heavens opened and the Holy Ghost came down and a voice from heaven said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased from there the Bible says the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness there were some things that happened when he was preparing for the favorable year of the Lord hallelujah 
There are some things in our life that go on that are positioning. I'll be teaching another day on positioning yourself for favor. But there are some things in your life and my life we've got to be on God's timetable. We've got to be moving according to God's timetable. And I believe this year that God wants to shower his favor upon us in such a year. We want to have breakthroughs that we never had before. We want to have openings that we never had before. We want to have obedience that we've never obeyed before. We want to go and, and stretch out and spread out and, and launch out and, and preach like we never preached. And pray like we never prayed. And declare the truth like we never done before. This is the favorable year of the Lord. Jesus got out of that water and probably out of the water he was asking God which way and God said now go into the wilderness and Jesus would have asked wilderness should I tell mama goodbye or should I? I often wonder did he tell his mama I'm going for 40 days you know years ago when I was preparing to do my higher studies in medicine I was doing just some basic inquiries on studying in some other states of India and and studying in, into Russia and all of that one day evening, my parents sent me to go to a nearby city to find out about some agent who could tell me about studying in Russia. So I, me being the pioneer that I am, I went to the nearby city and then inquired of the guy. The guy couldn't give me enough information. So I asked him, where can I get more information? This was around four o'clock in the evening. This is before the mobile phones came. This is, I don't know if we had a telephone at home. I don't remember. But four in the evening, the guy couldn't give me information. So I talked, where can I get more information? He said, if you go to Trivandrum, there you can get more information. I saw a cab going by. I stopped the cab. I jumped on the cab, drove two hours to Trivandrum. And I went to Trivandrum, went to my brother who was in medical college, stayed with him overnight, talked to a few people, spent some time, made some inquiries, did all of that. 3.30 in the morning, caught an early bus and was traveling back home. Six o'clock, reached my neighborhood. I left my bike in one corner, picked that bike, drove home. 6.30, I'm at home. And my father is mad at me. And I asked dad, what, what, what happened? What are you mad at me? He said, you didn't tell us you're not coming home yesterday. It's only then I remembered, yeah, man. I forgot to tell my parents that I'm not going home yesterday. Being the pioneer that I was, I just went on. And then my dad some, said something. He said, do you know that your mother has been standing at that gate all night waiting for her son to come back? Suddenly it dawned on me. <laughs> They sent me to a nearby town to find some information and come back. I just went all the way, all out. You know, it is time for us to, I've often understood, often wondered whether Jesus told his mother, Mama, I'm going for 40 days. The Bible says, as he came out of the water, he was led by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness. There he was tempted for 40 days. And when 40 days was over, after he fasted and prayed and sought God and obeyed the Holy Spirit and did and was tempted man shall not live by bread alone but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the father you shall not test the Lord thy God you know you shall worship only him after 40 days the devil left him and when he comes straight down from there goes back to his hometown gets back to the synagogue opens the scriptures reads Isaiah and uh, you know this portion and he then he sits down and says today the scriptures are fulfilled in your hearing because something had happened in that favorable time. He had prepared himself for that moment of truth. He had gone to obey the Lord in the waters of baptism. Favor comes upon people. Now, you got to understand, there is a difference between favor and the favor of the Lord. Hello? There is a difference between favor and the favor of the Lord. When I was studying these scriptures, I was thinking in my mind, Jesus was favored by God. Am I right? The Bible says, and he grew up in favor with God and man. Jesus had favor with God and he was crucified. Amen. Joseph had favor with God and he was thrown in a pit and in a prison for 13 years. So when we begin to study this word favor, there's a difference between being favored by man and being favored by God. When you study the word favor in the Bible, I want you to know this is a year of God's favor. Which means when we're going to have a favor from God, 
God is asking us to position ourselves in a particular way so that we can have an expected God ending. Amen. Jesus did not just one day come to the scriptures and say, you know what, today everything is going to be fulfilled in your hearing. He was sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that day led him to John. That day he got baptized. That day the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. Forty days he fasted and prayed and sought God. And then he came back and was led into the temple, opened up the scriptures and said, today, what does that mean? That tells me he was walking sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Favor comes when the spirit of the Lord comes upon me. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And favor opens up. Amen. You know why we have all this, you have this new thing on your hand? The spirit of the Lord comes upon you. And all your gadgets come along. But these gadgets come to unbelievers more than the believers. You know, you had to fast and pray for your gadgets, didn't you? You know, Dennis was telling me, I, I was fasting and praying for one of the apple. He's got two apple, uh, whatever. You had to fast and pray, right? You, something else, but you got, uh, or you're praying for an iPhone and you got a Galaxy uh, yeah, tab too. But you know what? Unbelievers don't have to fast and pray. They go to the shop and buy it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hello, do you understand what I'm saying? They want to buy a note too. They don't fast and pray. They pay. They go and they just buy their note too. But the difference is, when the favor of the Lord comes upon you, the effects of what that does to you has eternal implications. When favor comes from God, the effects are always eternal. Hey man, that favor is not for a short time. That favor is not because God can't bless you before. That favor is because if ever God opens favor on your life, he is saying, I'm giving you this thing because I have an eternal plan. Hey Amen. Including your, your little androids and your little iPhones and your little toys that God gives you. It is connected to God's eternal plan. Hallelujah. The cars and the homes and... We can live without a car or bike, but if God gives it, it's not because he wants to promote us. He gives it because his promoting us is connected to an eternal plan. Amen. Tell somebody, I'm blessed and highly favored. And tell them, I'm committed to his eternal plan. Amen. When Jesus got favored by God, he didn't get an iPhone. Hello. He didn't need an iPhone. What happened when favor came? Favor came, began to draw the people that were going to get affected by eternity, began to come to him. Every time when God releases a God favor upon us, that favor helps us to transform what eternity is going to look like. Somebody's eternity gets transformed by the favor he gives you and me. Amen. If I was a beggar walking on the street and God had called me to minister to the elite, all right, I want to assure you, if I'm a beggar walking on the street and I'm called to minister to the elite and I just minister to them, lead somebody to the Lord, by virtue of ministering to them, favor will come on me because the Bible teaches them to give to the Levites. And they will start giving their tenth and one day I'll buy a cycle, then I'll buy a scooter, then I'll buy an iPhone, then I'll have my uh, iPads and then I'll have my planes and this that and all. But if that is your focus, you have just become an idol worshipper. So this favor is not all these things. No sir, it is not. Favor is not the presence of goodies. Favor is not a good house or a good... While all that is favor... It's not the purpose of favor. The favor of God is not the presence of goodies. Neither is the favor of God the absence of pain. Because you, have an, because you and I have a car or a home or a gadget, it doesn't mean we are favored. Hello? If that's the case, then some of the most wealthiest people in the world, why aren't believers part of the top 10, 50 wealthiest people in the world? If wealth is a sign of favor, then unbelievers are highly favored. 
Because the top 10 richest people in the world are not believers. That means God's favoring unbelievers. So wealth is a, can be a part of favor. But wealth is not the end of favor. The end of favor is to transform somebody's eternity. That's what happens when God favors you. And for that we don't need an iPhone, iPad. If we have it, well good, good, good for you. I mean enjoy your toy. Use it, be blessed, be a blessing to others. But as long as it's transforming somebody's eternity. If it is not transforming somebody's eternity, please don't tell me it's favor. It can be bought by any unbeliever who's not favored by God. The Bible talks about different scriptures in the Bible. Season of favor. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And so there was a positioning and he has anointed me to preach the good news, to, to heal, bring, you know, healing, sight to the blind and bind the brokenhearted and, and to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 2, the Bible says, for he says, what does it say? In a favorable time, I listened to you and in a day of salvation, I have helped you. In a favorable time, I what? I listened to you. Which means God was saying, there's a season of favor when God would answer that prayer. Now there are, some of you might wonder, you know, you know, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I knocked on heaven's door and I prayed and that's why God answered that prayer. No, sometimes God answered prayer simply because it was time for you to have it. 